law, if law has no intent, it's not a law. And the contract makes the law. So therefore, whatever your correspondence is, makes the law between your parties. So as long as you express your intent and your, your purpose, then that is the form. So, but I firmly believe, though, that as an administrator, you may want to kind of, you know, like, like have a little bit of professionalism to your, your forms. And especially when I'm contacting the government, another nice little thing I like to put in there is I like to put a big title underneath my, uh, my heading where I've got, uh, you know, uh, Dean Christopher David Clifford uh, in all capital letters to let them know my, this, this is coming from that legal person. That's who's contacting them. And that the actual individual contacting them is the administrator. So my title is right underneath that. And then I've got the contact address, and I put care of, just you know, because I really don't know what the, uh, the they've never gotten back to me on what the Canada the Canada Post code is, whether it's a military designation, what it, what it, I don't care what it is. I put it in there. I just say you can contact me care of this, and then directly under that I say this document is a matter of public record. I let the government know or anybody that I'm dealing with to do with the government that every correspondence between myself and them is a matter of public record. It's now registered at that point because that's what the, all, all that's all registration is is a public recording. So now I have a spot underneath that where I put public record number, and that's where I put the sticky for the uh, the registered mail if I want to send it registered mail. So it's definitely a matter of public record now. Um, I, I've heard all sorts of arguments. Uh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to leave it there, see, because there might be questions before I get off topic. Okay, and I <laughs> wanted to ask you how exactly do you sign your name then? Um, you know what? I've changed that over the years, and I change it all the time. And I, I, um, I think the most recent one that I have now is I used to, you know, I used to go off the theory that as above is below, and I used to put the same thing right below my signature that I had up top for the title. But now all I do is I put Dean C. Clifford spelled normally, and then I put uh, duly authorized administrator right underneath that, and that's all I put there. And that's all. So you, you don't put, put all, there. you don't put all rights reserved or. Nope. Uh, because uh, because you got to remember, government can only interact with with the legal person. They cannot distinguish between the man and the legal person. That doesn't mean you're one and the same, though. It means you're a part of the legal person. So you can assume any role, any capacity underneath that legal person, but all they can deal with is that agent in commerce. So uh, I can't remember where I was going with that. Um, <laughs> well, I was asking you, how would you sign your document? Yeah, so so I just sign as the duly authorized administrator, right? I'm, I'm my role is administration. I'm duly authorized to settle matters both publicly and privately. I'm the man. When you want to talk to this legal person, I'm the man. You don't talk to anybody else, and that's what that signature I, I, denotes. Okay. Yeah. Um, you you know, have a whole series. Of, we have like ten people in line with their hand up. One to ask not a problem. Question. Oh, I, I can actually say it's it's actually almost pointless to put all rights reserved. Um, simply be, you can, but the, the only rights you you can reserve with the government are the rights of the legal person, because they're they're never coming after the man anyways. It's not a human rights issue. It's a contract. Yeah, issue. but it's the man they take when they want to put you of in course, jail. Of course, because you're liable for whatever contracts you enter into. Right, you're the security. The same way that, uh, say, the Attorney General where I live is, is, a, is a man by the name of Andrew Swan, right? He acts in the capacity of the Attorney General, but if he acts in that role, if he breaks the law that the Attorney General is supposed to follow, that fiction, he's the one that's liable because he was the one that was playing the role, playing the function. If you're the chess piece that uh, that, that moves improperly, you're the one that will be penalized. You say on one of your videos that uh, you know who the players are. Know who the players are. There you go. Uh, that's a maxim playing. of law. You ought to know with whom you deal. So my first correspondence with people is I want them to clarify precisely who they are. And I put that right in there. You ought to know with whom you deal. I'm not talking to you unless you tell me who you precisely who you are and what your standing is with me. What do I care? Like, what's your standing? What what business arrangement do we have? Who are you? Right. I've already used some of your stuff. I've put it into practice. We'll see how it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to go ahead and start taking questions now? Or? Yeah, absolutely. All righty. We have Central Arkansas. Go ahead. Did you have a question for Dean Clifford? Central Arkansas, unmute yourself. I've unmuted you on this end. <laughs> do you have a question? Central Arkansas, did you step away from the phone? Okay, we're going to move on. I'll leave you unmuted. Just pipe in after we ask the next question. Dance forever. Let me unmute you. 
Okay. Did you have a question for Dean Clifford? Well, I'm Go not ahead, ready Dean. yet. Oh, you're not ready? I'm not ready. <laughs> I want to hear more. Okay. I want to uh, hear more. I have questions, but I'm not ready to ask questions yeah, yet. Yeah, it might get answered by the end of it here. Who knows? Yes. Okay. All righty. I tell you what, um, you and um, Central Arkansas, when you get it together, and just go ahead and hit star eight again, and I'll see you, and I'll let you go ahead and ask the question when you're ready. Okay. Moving right along, we have guest 16. Go ahead. Did you have a question for Dean Clifford? <laughs> Guest 16. I know there's a little bit of a delay sometimes. Yeah, I noticed that when I was on my phone and the computer at the same time. There was about a three-second delay. Yeah. Guest 16, did you have a question? Yay or nay? Hey. You don't know how to unmute yourself from your phone. I mean, if you have a mute button on your phone, be sure to unmute it. I do that all the time myself. Sit here and talk my talk to myself. And someone will come on and go, hey, is anybody there? <laughs> All right, guest 16, I'm sorry, I'm going to mute you back out. Press star 8 if you'd like to ask a question. We're going to move right along to Anna, 88 Bell. Go ahead. No question at this time. Okay, oh, thank no you. I guess everybody, Sometimes, everybody just wants to well, hear the talk, I guess. Well, you, you, to mute yourself out, you press star six, and to ask a question, you press star eight, and sometimes folks get it mixed up and do both. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, but anyway, we have still 13 more questions to go here. Uh, Sunny Nguyen, um, let me see here. I'm trying to unmute you. There you go. Go ahead, Sunny Nguyen. Did you have a question? Oh, uh, I'm... Uh I guess I'm. I'm. Uh, uh, There's a lot of things that are new to me, so I, I'm uh, listening in. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm also a Canadian and American, and all my families are Canadian. And uh, I'm glad that somebody. In, I'm trying to tell this to my family in Canada, and they uh, don't seem to understand it. So, so I'm really glad that there's a Canadian who who who, who know what they're doing. <laughs> Well, yeah, and you know what? It's recorded, so you'll be able to come back tomorrow or any time and or share the link with anyone to listen. So, But if you don't have a question, we're going to move on. Sunny? Sunny? Oh, um, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you for coming on. Enjoy the call. Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, SF Guest 1. SF Guest 1, did you have a question? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> SF Guest 1, if you have a mute button on your phone, um, try that. Yeah, it's taking the pressure off me, at least. <laughs> Giving you a little break here. Well, we've got 15 people lined up here. Just The list keeps growing. SF Guest 1, did you want to ask a question? Otherwise, I'm going to mute you out. Okay, if you want to ask a question, press star 8, and we'll get you right in there. Okay, Richard, North Carolina. I know your, yours is going to work. <laughs> hey, Richard. Hey, how you doing, Angela? Fine, thank you. Did you have a question for Dean Clifford? Yeah, I do. Uh, but actually, it may have been answered already. Uh, from what you've been saying, it sounds like this would work with representatives of the federal government as well as uh, in our country, the state governments as well. Would that be the case? It, it would work with anything because this is all commerce and this is all contract. And once you understand that you're the one that created the legal person, it was your signature and or your parents in your in your stead because you're a ward of the, uh, their ward at that point. It's your legal person. It's yours to operate in commerce. It's not bound by the government, it, but they want you to create this so they can interact with you. But anything beyond that, ha there has to be a contract for it. You have to contract with the government for everything. So it has to do with every branch of government. It doesn't matter what it is. There has to be a contract with you. But they operate on the presumption that there is a contract in place. And we don't know any better, so we, don't, we never bring up that point. Uh, question then. Um, for uh, uh, contracts like uh, 
oh, like an EIN number in the United States uh, as an employer. That's a contract. But there was well, never full disclosure. Does that uh, mitigate or nullify that contract because yeah, of fraud? Yeah, I, I actually, instead of it being like a, what, what, what do you normally refer that to? Uh, I, I actually refer to that as a tax exemption number when we apply for that. And what I've used it for in Canada is because uh, I'm a contractor and I never did get a business number or a GST number. And I'll go to businesses sometimes and they'll say, do you have a GST number? Uh, so that you can give them a nine-digit number that, that waives the GST, the taxes. And I give them that nine-digit social insurance number that I have that I never use. Well, I never get a bill in the mail, ever. It's, it's, it's more of a tax waive number, like a, ta a tax exemption, more than it is a contract to actually pay taxes with the government. I don't believe that one bit. I think that's just a presumption that we go along with when the government claims that. So you may want to clarify that with them. Uh, contact them in advance, like I tell people, and ask them to say, well, excuse me, does it, it, every time I attach this number uh, uh, to, to my employment, does that make my income uh, something that the, the, the government has jurisdiction over? Because uh, to my best belief and knowledge, it, it doesn't. Well, and, let, and let them reply to that. The thing about the EIN number is that that's a, as me being an employer paying the taxes or sort of paying into the fund for my employee. Yep. And, and apparently you in, in U.S. law, you can't get rid of that damn thing. No, you can't uh, here either. But, uh, but it should be held void because it is uh, an adhesion contract that full disclosure never was provided. Yeah, but all you have to do is just not use it ever again. Okay. You can work without a you can work without a social insurance number or uh, or an EIN down the states. You can open bank accounts without one. You can exist without one. I did that for a number of years when I first started battling Canada Revenue Agency. I disappeared completely. I didn't exist for about a period of five years before I came out of hiding and decided, no, no, I want to go after these bastards. Yeah, I want to go after the bastards too. Um, <laughs> so that would be that, that would be some of the processes I explained then, where you contact them and say, hey, hey, wait a minute. Uh, just because I have this EIN number doesn't mean that the, that, that the money I'm making is something that you have the jurisdiction to tax because I wasn't performing a function of government. Are you claiming that the funds I made came from the public coffers? Can you prove that? Well, well mine kind of do because they come from Medicaid, for example, or Medicare. Okay, that might be a little bit different then. See, that's part of the problem. If you actually are working for the government, that's, that's, well, kind of un that's almost unknown territory. Well, no, I don't work for them. Yep. I, I, I'm not an employee. I have a contract with uh, Medicaid for the state of North Carolina, for example, and get reimbursement for patients that I see. Okay. Uh, but I'm not, a, I'm not their employee. Okay. You may want to try something like what they do up in your, here in Canada. I think uh, Paradigm Group is doing it, and they were filing zero owing returns then when you went to do your, so they were doing the deductions all year uh, just to not cause a problem with where their workplace was. But then they file a zero owing return where, well, no, none of the money was income. I didn't make, uh, you know, the, the, the legal person didn't make any taxable income. And then when they come right. back at you and say, well, how can that possibly be? Then you say, well, none of the money I made was performing a, a, a function of government through a contract with the government. That's right. That's where you would do that. Okay. And so if need be, you would go to court and you would fight that, and you'll only win that one once. I think even, uh, you, and you guys got case law now down there because of Joe Bannister. You know, fought the, I fought the IRS and I won. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Thanks that might be much. the way to deal with that, and that's how to deal with things administratively. Can you repeat the name of that group at, up in Canada that does that, though, so I can reference that? Yeah, I, I, the, their name was Paradigm Group. Uh, that was Russ Perisky that was doing that, and I, I know one of the educators there. And uh, But uh, that's, all, that's all they were doing was they, they were filing zero owing returns, but then I think they were losing some of their court battles then when they had to go back and then explain why they were filing zero owing returns. And that's uh -huh. because they weren't making the proper arguments at that point. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Oh, and you're welcome. Hello. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Cherry Stone, go ahead. Did you have a question? <laughs> yes. Hi. Hi, Dean. How you doing? Hi. Pretty good. Um, here's my question. Um, a situation. I have a court date coming up on Monday. I just recently heard about you and I'm very excited, you know, to see if I can try this in court. The situation is it's a homeowners association. Um, they had already gotten a default judgment and a, and a lien, but now they have 
they're trying to subpoena me to come to court to bring, like, my bank account, 